I'm John Goopland. I'm a professor at Penn State, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this work we've done on bitterness uh, and the effects of protein on bitterness. This is some work I did. Uh, well, the main worker here is Kelsey Tenney. She was this was her master's uh, thesis research. But we also worked with John Hayes, who's also at Penn State, uh, and he's a sensory specialist, and Steve Houston, who's at Harriet Watt University in Scotland, and he worked on the computer modeling aspects of it. Bitterness is a really interesting taste. At least for young animals and human beings, bitterness is almost always aversive. By that we mean it's something people don't want to eat. Against that, a lot of the compounds that we think of as healthy, a lot of phenolic compounds, for example, and some drugs have quite strong bitter tastes. So we're looking at ways of making bitter foods more accessible and available for people to eat. And we settled on whey um, because it's a, it's a fairly well-studied, generally accepted food protein source. I think we could have got some similar results with different types of food proteins, but whey is a nice, easy, general source of globular proteins that we could use in the study. So we, looked, we had these two bitter compounds. We had caffeine and we had quinine. And we picked up them because one of them is quite hydrophobic and it doesn't like water. One of them is more hydrophilic, it's more comfortable being dissolved in water. And our idea was that the more hydrophobic one would tend to bond into protein structure better. Proteins are polymers and they've got, um, typically in a globular protein structure like a whey protein, you've got some hydrophobic parts and some hydrophilic parts at the surface. And hydrophobic parts tend to bind hydrophobic small molecules. An idea was that we'd be able to bind up the hydrophobic ones and not bind up the hydrophilic ones. And that worked out quite nicely. The chemical methods were, were fairly straightforward. I think people have done this sort of thing before of working out just how much stuff is, how much of a small molecule is bound up by the, the, the proteins we care about. So that was straightforward HPLC. Uh, the sensory analysis, again, was a fairly straightforward conventional measurement of how do people rate the taste of this stuff. Uh, the modeling stuff was a little bit, at least for my lab, different. And we had to work with Steve Houston to be able to do this well. And this is trying to come up with some understanding of, we know this stuff is bound by the protein. We don't know how. So the way Steve does it is he generates a protein molecule within his computer, generates a caffeine molecule or a quinine molecule, and just allows the uh, those bitter molecules to explore sites on the protein surface. And when it finds a different conformation, it sort of says, is this a low energy stable conformation or is it a high energy unstable conformation? And here's a sorting process to work out well, which are the more stable conformations, which are the less stable conformations. And this was nice from the point of view of our work because we didn't have just the experimental empirical statements about, yes, this molecule was bound, this molecule was not bound. We could actually say, okay, this is reasonable from what we know about protein structure, what we know about the structure of our small molecules, and gave us a little bit more mechanism that we wouldn't have been able to get by other methods. Sensory testing was, um, it's, I mean, it's hard to do good sensory, but uh, the actual question we we're asking wasn't that sophisticated. We we're just asking people to rank how bitter are these different solutions, and we gave them different concentrations of uh, bitter molecules, we gave them different concentrations of protein, and we were looking for differences between the, the between those different types of stimuli. Well, we discovered that one of our compounds was bound, bonded by um, protein and one of them wasn't. So um, the the one that wasn't, the one that was bound, uh, uh, was less bitter in the presence of protein. Uh, and that's what you'd expect. So the idea is if it's if the bitter molecule is bound up by the protein, it can't interact with your taste buds on your tongue, so you don't taste it as much. What was weird about our work was there wasn't enough suppression of bitterness, not as much as you'd expect. So we might have got, say, 99% of the bitter molecules bound up by the protein, but the level of decrease in perceived bitterness was way less than you'd expect from that. So there's some way we were the the the, um, the tasters were perceiving the bitterness even when the bitterness was associated with a a protein molecule, and we're still scratching our heads a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. And how does that work? Because I mean, there is a protein receptor on the tongue that's responsible for this. There is a place on the protein molecule that this bitter molecule is bound to. So how does the the bitter molecule get off the protein and to the tongue when, as far as we can tell, it, it it is bound because it's certainly not going to be able to interact with the tongue receptor protein while it's still bonded onto the the the, the whey protein. And we have some ideas, but we don't have a really good answer to that. And I think it's that's going to be a really exciting area for future research. 
I think there's all sorts of interesting questions about how do we taste these very, very bitter compounds that are bonded? Well, we showed them they bonded to um, whey proteins. But if you ate them in like a realistic food matrix, you ate an olive, for example, or you, uh, you ate a, a vegetable. Well, all those molecules are going to be bonded to, to all sorts of stuff naturally within, the, within that food matrix. And we still taste them. So how does that work? How do they even get to the place? What's the physical chemistry? What's the engineering of getting those molecules to where they need to go? Because they um, they need to, to, to physically move through through a space they're not very, very soluble in the salt saliva. And I, th I think that's a really unasked question in sensory science. And one of the things I've really enjoyed working with John Hayes is bringing my interests, which is physical chemistry, alongside his interests in sensory science, mm -hmm. and be able to look at these questions in slightly different ways. Mm -hmm.